This problem talks about a block that's been placed on a frictionless incline. And I'm going to answer part A. How far did the block travel down the incline before momentarily stopping? Okay, so this is part A. So let's read the information we have here. We have a mass. Let's see, that's a mass of 3 kilograms. And we have an incline of 40 degrees, so that'll be theta. 40 degrees, labeled here in the diagram. And we have a spring that was designed to compress by 20 centimeters when a 40 newton force was applied. So that's really just telling us what the spring constant is. In fact, maybe I'll do that right now. We'll just calculate what that is. So we know that F equals KX. And so K is F divided by X. And so the force, it said, was 40 newtons. And that's when it compresses by 20 centimeters. That's 0 0.20 meters. And so if you calculate that, that gives a value of 200 newtons per meter for K. Now I know normally I like to write the final answer just in terms of variables and wait and do all the calculation at the end, but if there's an obvious thing that you can do that is sort of separate from the rest of the problem, that's totally fine. You can go ahead and calculate and get a number for it. So in this case, this tells us what K is. K is 200 newtons per meter. Okay, and see what else we have. The block is released from rest and it slides down the incline. So released from rest, I'll just say its initial speed here is zero meters per second. And it compresses the spring by 12 centimeters. So let's say that's X. And maybe just to make sure, I'll call this X naught just so we know it's not the same X. And this X is 12 centimeters, so that's 0.12 meters, okay. So I want to know how far did the block travel down the incline before momentarily stopping? Now the first thing that would help here is to recognize that this is an energy problem because um, you could solve it possibly with uh, Newton's laws and force, but it's going to be kind of messy and it'll be a lot easier to solve it using energy. So that's what I'm going to do. And anytime you solve an energy problem, you got to do a few things. First thing we got to do is pick our zero point. In other words, if we're going to measure potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy, where are we going to measure it from? So here's my spring right now at its uh, equilibrium. And then if it gets pushed in, let's suppose maybe it goes to here when it gets pushed in. So that means that according to what I've labeled here, this distance here is X. So there's X right in there. And here I'll maybe I'll turn put arrows there so you can see X is from there to there. Okay. And then I need to pick a variable for where the block started, so let's call that D. So this distance will be D. And so my block starts here and it hits the spring there and it compresses it down to there. I need to pick a zero line. I'm going to pick Let's say, uh, we'll pick down here, we'll make this be the zero line. Okay, that's where I'm measuring my gravitational potential energy from. Okay, so I think I'm ready to set up my conservation of energy here. Now I do have uh, a frictionless incline, so I don't have to worry about uh, any non-conservative forces here. So I can do simple, um, conservation of mechanical energy. K initial plus U initial equals K final plus U final. And I should specify what's initial and what's final. So I want to know how far did the block travel down the incline before momentarily stopping. So I'm going to say that my initial is when the block is at the top. So let's say initial is um, block at the top of ramp should always specify what initial and final are. And final is after compressing the spring. Okay, so kinetic energy initial. 
Uh, well, the initial speed was zero, so I don't have any initial kinetic energy. That's zero. My initial potential energy. Okay, so now here's where I have to be a little bit careful because it's gravitational potential energy, and it's mgh, where this is h right here. So let's maybe draw a little triangle here. So this is my block up here, and this is where it ends. And so this distance here, this distance is x plus d. And this is theta, and this is a right triangle, and this is that h I'm trying to calculate right there. And so if we figure out what trig function we want here, this looks like maybe a sine function would be good. So I could say that the sine of theta is h over x plus d. And so that means that h equals x plus d times the sine of theta. Okay. And then I have it written as I want it. Okay, so my initial potential is mg x plus d sine theta. Okay, kinetic energy final. Well, that's also zero because when it stops after compressing the spring, uh, the speed is again zero, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I do have some final potential energy because the spring is compressed. Now I don't have any final gravitational potential energy because at, after compressing the spring, I'm at my zero line. So I don't have to worry about that, but I do have some elastic potential energy. And that's one half K, and then the amount the spring was compressed from equilibrium, I called that X. So one half KX squared. Okay. And I'm solving for how far did the block travel down the incline? I'm solving for x plus d. So there's x plus d right there. I can actually just solve for it right now. x plus d equals, and then I want to divide the mg sine theta over to the other side. So 2 mg sine theta. And then in my numerator, I have a kx squared. The 2 is from the half right there. Okay, now I can plug in. I think I know what all these things are. So it's two times the mass of three kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then the sine of 40 degrees. Okay. And then up top I have K is 200 newtons per meter and x is 0.12 meters, and that's squared. Okay, and so now I can calculate that and get my final answer, and for x plus d, if you calculate it, you get 0 0.634 meters, which is 63.4 centimeters.